You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Howdy do, buckaroos, and welcome to Comics with My Kids podcast, the official podcast for the Comics Corner Box. Blogspot.com. I'm your host, Matt D, and with me today is Logan D and Melody D. Hey, kids, aren't there four people with us? You bet your dad is now over. Wait, Mark. Mark. Oh, Mark. Sorry. And he's here to tell us about his new book, Squish and Squash. Hello, Mr. O'Rourke. Hello. Thank you for having me. You so got Mr. my name. You got my name. You got my name almost correct. <laughs> so, Mr. O'Rourke, your book is called Squish and Squash. Can you give us a brief breakdown of the story? Yeah, sure. So, this, so um, Squish and Squash, first of all, is also a co-production with uh, artist extraordinaire Mike Hartigan, who's based in New Zealand, who uh, who is not here right now, obviously. But uh, I want to give him a plug because um, without without him, this book wouldn't have been possible. Um, Squish and Squash tells the story of two uh, cadets in the Intergalactic Search and Rescue Squad. Squish is a cat. Squash is an elephant. And together they have to pass a really difficult test in order to earn their patch and become rescuers in the Intergalactic Search and Rescue Squad. So we follow their adventures in book one, just an introduction story to, their, to them and their world. And it's a, fun, it's a fun adventure story for all ages from Keen Spot. Fantastic. Um, where did you guys come up with the uh, the intergalactic search and rescue squad? Um, okay, so there's a little funny backstory to this because, um, well, actually, I I, I was writing a, a a supernatural horror story for the last two years, which is more towards adults, so we won't go into that to this podcast really. Um, but I was looking for a comedy chaser. So I was leaving for work one night and I gave my wife a hug and she and she was like, oh, you're squashing me. And I said, you sure I'm not squishing you? So I went to work that night and I said, I've got I had this idea in my head for an all ages book. And all of a sudden I had the name Squish and Squash. So I, so I went I ran with that. So that night at work, I came up with this synopsis. But I needed an art style to go with the book. And my style didn't really suit it. So I was on Instagram. And I, I, I'd been looking at this guy's artwork for a long time. His name was Mike Harding. He's really, really, really good. You know, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be famous. So I, I reached out to Mike and I said, hey, you have this crazy idea for an all ages book um, called Squish and Squash. And I want to do like an adventure story, like a, like a search and rescue. Rather than being, rather than being like cops and robbers, like violence, I'd rather have them be rescuers and actually rescue people, you know, who are in danger. So he liked the idea, and we kind of teamed up. And in a week, he had six sample pages made, and a kind of cover. He had a cover made as well, so it was pretty extraordinary that he managed to do this. And we're in a week, so we were off, we're off and running. So we were looking for a, you know, looking for a publisher. We had the story, we had the the six page sample, and pretty rapidly we found Keen Spot were interested in it. So you know, we here we are today, exactly one, almost one year to the date. Where we had the sample pages done, we now have a. Well, we're on book three now, but book one is out in the stores, so it's pretty remarkable, you know. That's really cool. How yeah. did you guys work together to create these characters? Well, I gave I gave Mike all, all the freedom in the world because he's such a great artist, and uh, we he had sent me a couple of character designs that he thought might suit the characters. Initially, we thought that um, Squash would be a a gorilla. Or, or, you know, and I was like, mm, yeah, okay. You know, we were looking for something original, obviously. But then we refined it and, and Squash became an elephant, you know. Squ- Squish was always going to be a cat. Um, a cat a cat, and a, a cat and a gorilla kind of was, was okay with that. Once he, once he sent me the elephant, I said, no, that's it. That's what we want, you know. It seemed, it seemed like a good pairing, you know. And as far as the world... The world is, um, is, it's all animals. It's all animal characters mixed with a couple of aliens. I like that idea where it's like there's no humans. It's just all, all animals with, with human traits, obviously, you know. Um, so it, it gives us a lot more scope, you know. You know, it, it, everyone's represented, you know. There's, there's no 
there's no race as a, as as a, as a, no as every, everyone's represented and that's in that in that kind of uh, context you know yeah it's it's a really um, neat way to include characters and not you know get political or anything and yeah 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 that yeah, of course it doesn't there's all colors represented obviously when it comes to animals and and everything else but just like i i like the i just like the idea in general of having having an, an animal universe you know it's more fun you know yeah i mean who's to say that these animals aren't aliens you know they don't have to be based in, here in, on earth well, I, 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 I generally speaking, I give, I give the, um, the universe is actually New York. I kind of, kind of give, like, I can, I can always imagine the, the character speaking with like a Queens or a Brooklyn accent. You, know? <laughs> you can see that throughout the book, you know, the way they talk, you know. Awesome. What made you pick the colors on the characters? Are they like your favorite colors? Um, well, pink and blue, you know, um, pink for a girl, blue for a boy. So that was pretty much where we went from from there just very simple you know and um, as like once again i said mike mike he had he had all the freedom in the world to come up with his own design so i was really happy with what he came up with so um yeah you know it's it's there was there was there was a lot of stuff put into that but at the same time it's 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 fairly simple when you break it down you know like squish is can be identified as a girl and and, and squash can be identified as a boy blue blue and pink you know hey so yeah we saw a lot of references in the book like little hidden easter eggs here and there and melody pointed something out to me and she had a, a, a real important question she wanted to ask about that um melody you want to go ahead and ask him about your your reference question to that diner uh why did you make um did you make the space diner uh based off of a movie called Spaceballs? i never saw Spaceballs. oh <laughs> i have to conf- i have to confess i don't watch animation I, re- I I I it's I I watched Saturday morning cartoons and maybe some couple of movies here and there. I just I created this from what I what I like and what I wa- what I wanted, you know. Oh, okay. I, I, cool. I, you know, I I mean the space diner. I mean it's a diner in space to me. It's like it and it has a drive through, which we call a fly through, you know. So I think that was a fun thing to do. Yes, it was, it was very like, cool. I, like, I, I, I know it seems odd for me to write a write an all ages book, but I don't don't necessarily watch cartoons anymore. You know, it's just and just I'm just you know, that's just me. You know. Well, I th- I thought it was really clever, and uh, Mel Brooks thought it was clever too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're talking about oh, hold on a minute, we're talking about space Spaceballs the movie. Yes, yeah, Spaceballs the movie. Oh, I thought I thought I'm I'm getting mixed up with something else. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I've seen Space Ball a million <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually don't remember it. I don't remember that reference. There you go. Uh, maybe somewhere in the back of my mind, it did come through, and that's what made, that's what influenced me. Sure. There you go. All right. All right. There you're having go. a senior moment there. <laughs> you know? I was thinking of Space Jam. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I I I've shown my kids the the classic '80s uh, Mel Brooks flick Space Balls because we love right, Star right, Wars right, and Star right. Trek. So oh, come on. You got it. You got to put it out there. Calm to death. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't found okay <laughs> all right so logan was well, it, was there anything else you well, want they, to... they actually just got back to the space diner it's a it's almost like a, it's a um it takes a big role in the story because both characters like to eat snacks you know now, okay um especially squash he looked and i threw i threw in like a lot of food references there like um, they love blue chocolate chip cookies <laughs> so maybe somewhere down the line if we if we get lucky some some company like Nestle or something will will create a, a, a blue chocolate chip cookie for kids, you know. <laughs> what made you come up with a blue chocolate chip cookie? Well, that's what I'm saying. We we wanted to have like a little bit of a maybe a little bit of merch thrown in with the story, you know. I mean, if 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 we ever get lucky to get a cartoon series, I mean, who knows, you know? Throw a little bit of merch in there along the way. Plus, they actually well in the story they're they're they they're found the snacks so we had to come up with something original so obviously something that's not branded so we had to create our own you know right it's blue chocolate chip cookies and they like um martian mellows which are like red marshmallows <laughs> and then they have a in book two i they have another snack as well so i try and introduce a, a new snack along the way you know awesome <laughs> if you got to eat one of the snacks which one would you eat oh, I, i'd be in, i'd be into the blue chocolate chip cookies big time you know they're only blue in color you might turn your teeth blue just a little behind the, behind the scenes thing. Somebody in our family uh, really enjoys birds, so we have a pet bird in our house. So every right. time, every ask a question, I'm muting the mic so that we don't get that parakeet in the background. So that's so funny because uh, Squish has a pet bird, 
<laughs> yeah, because I remember she has um, gets a macaw because one of those red birds with a, a few colored feathers. Right. Right. It's probably smart. Was it a scarlet macaw? I think in the description in in the in the script, I just asked Mike that to say that. Squish has a pet parrot. I wasn't being very collective <laughs> on what word it was supposed to be, but that's fine. You know? nice. What got you into creating comic books? Oh, I'm like, you can just look over at Logan and Melody, and you can see that at their at their age, I was big into comic books, and I'm I'm, th- I'm thankfully that you guys are at your age, you know. But I mean, uh, you know, I just got lost in the lost in in the in the comic book universe of Marvel, DC. <clears throat> then when I get to my teenage years. I discovered a lot of British comics, uh, 2000 AD, Judge Dredd, that kind of stuff. That led me into like a lot of darker stuff, like the Dark Knight and heavy metal comics, that kind of stuff. And then I came back full circle into like all ages books now. And uh, it was more of a fun side to it, I guess. I've, I've been through all the serious dark stuff. Now it's, and it's time to like branch out a little bit, you know. Um, yeah, just always love comics. Love the medium storytelling, you know. Use your imagination, you know, create whatever world you want. There's no limit, you know. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, that was always a, it was always a dream to break into comic books. I've always wanted to work for Marvel Comics. That's that's still a dream. Um, I never thought that I'd be lucky enough to have my own book on the shelf that I create, help I help create, and thankful to uh, Keen Spot to, for making it happen and and collaborating with uh, Mike Hartigan and uh, our letterer Justin Birch and. A lot of the different uh, varying color actors to make this happen, and um, you know, it's it's a lot of work. It's it's a lot of um, it's 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 a lot of uh, it's, it's a, a lot of um, uh, uh, dedication, I guess you could say, um, to get this far. But I mean, if you're willing to do it, it's possible. You know, t- totally. You have Kickstarter, you have Indiegogo, you've all these different different uh, platforms to help you help you get get your book off the ground if you want to do it. Not necessarily you need a publisher to do it. Um, you can self-publish, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much. It's always been a dream, and it took me it took me a while to get here, um, but I did it nonetheless. So, you know, well, it's, this is a, you know, we'll, let's see where we go with this. You know, well, it's really awesome. I, I got to say, I've you know, we, we read this the the first issue of Squish and Squash, and it really sucked me in. Um, like you, I've been reading. I was reading comics since I was Melody and Logan's age, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a fun book for the whole ages. Um, you know, I, yeah. I, I gotta say finding this, uh, you know, your publisher keen spot, uh, mm-hmm. evidently it's, it's a relatively newer publishing company. Um, can you kind of like tell us how you got involved with them? Um, so I was, that's funny. I was, at, I was, I was out in Long Island, uh, in April, I was getting the passport renewed and uh, while I was waiting for my, um, my in, my my date or to, to meet to meet the lady in the pa- passport office. I was born some time in the town, and there's a small there's a small comic book shop called. And shout out to Android Comics out in Sayville. I went in there just to kill some time, and I obviously bought some comics as well. You know yourself. <laughs> um, I I was looking on the on the shelves, and I was telling the guy about uh, my horror comic that was coming out, and I, I had an idea for this other one, and I was looking for all ages books, and sure enough, there was a there was a copy of. A comic book called Toy on the shelf by Keen Spot. And I'm like, I've never heard of Keen Spot like yourself, you know. I picked it up and I looked through the book and I seen that they were very successful in Hollywood so far. I would have one of them comics turned into a movie called um, Marry Me. And Owen Wilson and J Lo were the stars of the film. And I'd heard of the movie, but I didn't know it was a comic book. So I'm like, oh wow, these guys are are, are making waves, you know. And they, they, I like some of the books they're putting out because the guy had like two or three co- uh, different comics on the shelf. So I went home that night and um, I found the publishers on. I use. I think I must have went on Facebook or Instagram or something. I I went straight to the to the head honcho himself, Chris Chris Crosby, the the the, the head publisher, and wrote to him and said, "Hey, I have this idea for a um, an all ages book, and here's our sample pages. Would you guys be interested?" I think within a week he gave us an offer and we signed it. You awesome. Know? You know there was a, there was other interest out there, but um, Keen Spot were like. They seemed like a really a really good company to work with, like, they, like what they were putting out and stuff. You know, the fact that, yeah, I mean, he was keen, pardon the pun. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know, they they seemed very, you know, very uh, very focused. And uh, so far, like, I mean, they gave us a, they gave us a schedule in a week for previews. 
the whole series, you know. Awesome. I mean, that was that was pretty, you know, pretty impressive, you know. So yeah, we're up where you have a. It's a four book series, so we're we're on. Um, we're Mike is finishing up uh, book three now, and I'm just finishing up the script for book four. So after that, we don't know what's going to happen because. Uh, you know, it's uh, we ha- we we initially had four, so we we'll see what happens. You know, just, just endless imagination, full of sto- head full of stories. So we'll see where it goes. You know, yes, and it's like I said, it's it's a fun story to read. I know all three of us have really enjoyed it. I tried to make I tried to make each book its own self contained story, like a serialized, like it's like watching the cartoons show. You know, each each episode has its own self contained story in it, so it's so it's accessible for new readers at any point. You can pick up book two. And you'll immediately know what it's about. Their search and rescue squad, and this is their self, this self-contained story. You don't have to go back to issue one or two and find out well, what's what's. Well, I mean, yes, you do. <laughs> you have to go buy the whole series, but I'm just saying for access, you know, you can just pick it up and right. enjoy enjoy a, enjoy a story. You know, awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just having a cup of coffee. <laughs> Well, um, so this uh, the series, you know, you said each issue is a serial, uh, or you know, serialized. So, are you planning for like another mini series? Yeah, well, yeah, I think th- I think initially, um, uh, uh, less is more. I guess uh, the way I look at it, like I, like my my horror my horror series is four books. This is four. I just had it in my mind that everything I do is in four in, in four parts and. You know, we'll see where it goes. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'd like to do more, and it's up to uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. You know, um, if Mike is available, because he's uh, he's he's getting very popular these days. You know, he's um, he's got a couple of other books on the on the on the horizon, and uh, you know, I'd love I'd love I'd love for him just to be the, the main artist on the book because he co-created it, and um, we'll see where it goes. I mean, you know, it's 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 it's, it's as I said, right now we we had signed up for four books. Um, yeah, and I'd love to do more. You know, we'll see. We'll see where we'll see where we go. We'll see how popular the book gets and see how it does. And it's, it's a lot of factors involved in comic books these days. You know, distribution, stores, fighting for shelf space. Oh yes. So it's it's um it's it's it, that's the business side of it, which is like I'm only learning about it now after having a book out there on the shelf. So we've it's a it's a it's a it's a dog eat dog world at the moment, no? Or elephant <laughs> but, uh, eat cat world? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Oh, no, they don't eat. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they only eat snacks. <laughs> well, I, I certainly hope that you, you're able to get more adventures with the Squish and Squash because they're definitely a, a, a fun uh, couple of characters. It's a fun book to read. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we've only read the first issue so far, but I really like it. And I, I'm going to go ahead and order it with my local comic shop. Um, Thank you. You know, book two is out in January. So, I mean, the local comic book store might have missed the the deadline with that one as well, but they can still order it through through Diamond or, and through uh, the Keenspot dot uh, com, Keenspot Shop dot com. Awesome. But um, we really take off from book t- book two. We I, I I I have a lot more freedom because you know book one is a pilot and you're setting up the story, the world, and else. Book two, I had a lot of a lot a lot of fun writing book two. Right. You know, I I really so far it's my favorite one. You know, called Sea of Sludge. And that tells it's more of it's an environmental story. It's about um a corrupt uh sludge sludge rig owner called Maxwell Muck. And it's he's a uh, he's cutting corners and he's he's polluting the world that his sludge rig is based on. And Squish and Squash have to go rescue some sludge workers from his from his rig that's on fire. And when they get there they find out from um the the mayor of Fishtown, the Fishtown is like located under the sea below the rig, and they've been subjected to a lot of pollution over the years from this sludge. I use sludge in case as a you know metaphor for oil <laughs> in the petroleum industry. So sludge is a has had a, an environmental impact on the town, is destroying their ecosystem. So they have a protest, and squish and squash are kind of dragged into it now. And they see what's really going on. Like Maxwell Muck is corrupt, and he's been he's been destroying their planet, you know, with greed and and his uh, lust for more sludge. You know, he's trying to he's trying to take over Fishtown and to get the sludge deposits beneath the town. So, 
squishing and squash you have to come in and save the day you know right so it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good it's a fun story too and i give you a little message at the end of it about cleaning beaches for you know how 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 everyone has their part to play in protecting the, the beach environment and protecting the oceans and stuff you know? awesome yeah, I gotta say, I, I really like the the message within the book um, so far. Like the first one is definitely about you know perseverance. Don't give up. You know, yeah. Always, always try to look for another solution to a problem. I think that's it's really a cool positive message in your in your comic. I guess I guess that's 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 what it, that's what it is about breaking into comics as well because you will. I mean, from my point of view, I mean that's that would be my take from where, where I came up with that idea of it from my own struggles with it because you know. You, you uh, when, when you get involved in comics or any any field for that from my sports or whatever it might be, you're gonna find you, it's it's an uphill battle before you actually get somewhere. You know, but you have to persevere. You have to if you're if you're passionate about something, you gotta stick with it. Eventually, eventually you will get somewhere. You might not become a millionaire overnight, but you will you achieve you'll achieve your goal at least somewhere along the line. You know, so that's what that, that's what it was to me. And that's where I was coming from when I wrote it. You know, fantastic. Yes, that's that's a definitely a solid message. Well, yeah. is there uh, anything else that you kids want to ask Mr. Rourke while we have his ear? Because uh, I, I don't want to take too much more of his time. Well, no, no, fine. I'm, I'm not in any, any rush here. You guys can ask as many questions as you like. <laughs> I know you said that you haven't watched a lot of movies, but there's like another reference I noticed that might not have been intentional. Towards the okay. end of the book, when right. uh, they had completed the mission, when they had flown into the volcano. That was kind of yeah. like one movie I had saw called Player One, and the easiest way right. to beat the course was actually to go backwards and go through secret exit and dig, uh, oh, win. Okay. I did actually see Ready Player One. I like that film. Hmm. Is that why you chose to make it that way? Um, not really. I mean, I was, I, I was just thinking of something more unconventional and more ridiculous way of doing it, like feeding the test. Uh, uh, that no one would ever think of, you know. I mean, like, what? How ridiculous is that? Like, instead of like, oh, we know what we we we've done the test how many times? Twice already. We've been hit by this flying rock going from the <laughs> volcano. How about we dodge it the next time? You know? No. How, how about we fly back into the volcano? Like, come on, that, what are you thinking? You know? <laughs> yeah. Something totally unconventional. I thought like that would be more fun. You know, be more like. Like that's why Squash's uh, reaction was like flabbergasted. Like, what the <laughs> heck are you doing? You know? you know? Yeah. So I mean, it's like that. I mean, subconsciously, maybe I was influenced by that. I'm not saying I wasn't, but I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, everything you, we read, we watch movies, we watch TV, we read books. That all we play on that, of course. You know, that we're, we're influenced by a lot of different things, but. No, I wouldn't say Ready Player One had anything to do with the ending I had I had in this book, you know. Right. That's kids. They they love seeing references. They right recognize right, right. stuff. I so. mean, like yeah. I mean, you're trying. You're always trying to create something something original, but at the same time, it's it's very hard to come up with something that that doesn't seem <laughs> seem similar. You know. Yeah. I wasn't actually setting out to do that. I mean, I'd, I'd still be writing it today if I was trying to avoid similarity. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, uh, I think that's about all we've got for tonight. Um, well, is there uh, where can where can our um, listeners follow you? Uh, I'm my Instagram page is uh, nycdub. Okay. You can also follow Mike Hartigan on Instagram as well. Okay. You can also follow Keenspot. No. Well, I'll put I'll make sure to put those in our show notes for our listeners so that they can follow you there as well. Well, folks, thanks for listening to this episode of Comics My Kids Podcast. Check out more episodes at the Comics Corner Box Blogspot.com. Leave us a rating or review at Apple Apple Podcast or Podchaser. Follow us on Twitter, all our episodes and news with Comics uh, with My Kids. Uh, at uh, Comics with Our Kids. Also check out our Facebook page, Comics with My Kids and Instagram. I want to thank now for joining us tonight to discuss his book, Squish and Squash, Issue 1. It's already the sh- on the shelves, and Issue 2, I believe... I mean, Issue 2 is coming out on January 24th. Niall, is there anything else you would like to say? Um, uh, thank you for having me on the show. I um, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, check out Squish and Squash from 
Nile Rourke, Mike Hartigan, and Justin Birch from Keenspot. Fantastic. And it gets our vote of approval, our seal of approval. We'll uh, we'll be sure to plug the heck out of the book when it comes out. In, uh, this issue two comes out on January twenty fourth. Not sure about the twenty fourth, but it's out towards probably towards the end of January. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> January twenty twenty four. Yeah. There yeah, we yeah. go. Twenty twenty four. There you yeah. go. There you go. That makes that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, thanks and have a great night. Good night. Thank you. Good afternoon, middle of the day, or that time between, or tea time. That's not a time. That's a meal. For supper. That was your line. Logan. Well, no, I'm sorry. Your line. <laughs> I want to think. Uh, how did I get stuck with that? Nice. <laughs>